All right, welcome back. So now we'll continue our discussion in this pneumatic conveying uh, systems. Now let's talk about the solid classifications. So how do we determine if um, if what's going to be the behavior of these materials when handled in this pneumatic conveyor? So there are two kinds of classification used for pneumatic convey conveying. One is the Geldart and uh, Geldart classification, and the other one is called the Dixon classification. Basically, the, um, the classification is based on the um, the particle size. So that's uh, let's say d d sub p, and we can just write in terms of micrometers or whatever distance uh, units. And this one would be in terms of the I guess that's the density or the difference in the density of the fluid and the density of the uh, no, this one is the solid density of the solid uh, the solids minus the density of the fluid or the air okay and we have this graph something like this and this one is group A and then this one is group B and this one is group C and this one is group D. Okay, so for group A, based on Geldarts, that's fine powders. But based on Dixon, uh, Dixon, it's uh, it just says that uh, this materials um, does not exhibit slugging behavior. No slugging behavior. Okay, again, this one is based on Geldart classifications, and this one is the Dixon's classifications. And there's actually some difference on these boundary lines. Okay, and we can just write Geldart is something like this, the dashed lines, and then this one is the solid lines, the Dixon's. And for the group B particles, it says that's the coarse, coarse granules course you have a um, higher particle size compared to a coarse granules but for Dixon it says um, it exhibits uh, dunes then for the C it says cohesive and this one so that's gonna be big particles big particles and it exhibits um, or it forms the slugs okay so that depends upon our um, mean particle size and then this difference in the uh, density okay so now let's talk about the classification of pneumatic pneumatic conveyors Okay, so number one, we can classify the pneumatic conveyor in terms of flow, uh, in terms of flow regime, and that's going to be the dense phase and uh, dilute phase. So dense phase is characterized by low velocity but high pressure. This one, the dilute phase, is um, high velocity but low pressure pressure drop now depending upon the references um, some says that uh, this one for for low for dense space the uh, pro the range velocity is one to five meters per second and this one the dilute phase is greater than 20 meters per second 
Uh, again, it's just a, uh, a values depending upon the references and the um, probably the materials or something. So this is the classification based on the flow regime. Then the second classification would be based on the pressure. Well, we can have uh, positive pressure or depending upon the references, they say uh, pressure systems. And then the other one is the negative pressure or vacuum pressure. Okay, so take note the vacuum pressure is um, based on thermodynamics definition that vacuum pressure is a pressure below the atmospheric pressure. So it's not necessarily negative pressure. Unless your your reference is the uh, is the atmospheric, I mean, if the zero would be the atmospheric. Okay, so that's uh, the classification based on pressure. So if we try to draw this, the um, positive pressure would be something like this. We have this feeder, then we have this outlet. So the air is actually forcing into uh, forcing the forcing the air into the systems okay so that's the positive pressure and for the negative pressure we still have these feeders and we have this uh, receiver and then our our blower would be somewhere right here okay so at this end so meaning that the air is being um, uh, suction is in suction mode okay so again this one is positive and then this one is negative so what's what's the advantage for positive it it is said to be more efficient more efficient than the uh, negative pressure system but uh, and also it has uh, intended for single entry point and different uh, exit point okay so meaning we have we have this uh, one feeder assembly and then we can have multiple feeders right here so because we have this uh, I mean because you are forcing the air into the systems then any leakages in the flange or connections then there's gonna be some uh, some some air that tries to go out from these leaks okay so in that way it would be um, less clean compared to the negative pressure. Now, for these negative pressure systems, we have, um, we can say it's cleaner than positive pressure. And typically, used for multiple entry point and single exit point okay so we can have uh, multiple entry point right here and because of this type of systems uh, we have um, it has uh, higher working pressures and therefore it requires bigger sizes of course bigger sizes and additional uh, components and therefore 
uh, more costly. Okay, so the last one would be we can classify the pneumatic conveyors in terms of closed loop or open loops. Basically, when you say loop, it's uh, the circulation, or you can think about it as the circulation of the air. So, closed loop, basically, you have a, a gas that's, that's just circulating in the systems. Okay, so why would you do that? Now, for some materials that are combustible or that should not be... Um, introduced with oxygen then then let's say the gas would be nitrogen so of course this this type of gas would be expensive as compared to air and then you might want to uh, recirculate the nitrogen okay so that's the idea for the closed loop systems now of course there's got uh, there's got to be filters somewhere just to separate the solid particles and then the gas. Okay. Now we'll move on to the parts and assemblies. Okay, so typical parts, we have this air moving devices and we have these feeders And we also have these receivers. Okay, so this one is the air moving devices. And that can be a fan, blower, or a compressor. So the difference between these fan blowers and compressors basically lies in the pressure the operating pressure and of course in terms of construction so how they are constructed uh, that's that's the difference so typically a fan although there are many types of fans but y y you can I mean you would be able to see this ventilation fans something like this so let's say in a, a tunnel tunnel ventilated poultry so you have this ventilation fans propeller fans and that's that's the typical applications of uh, fans for I mean for ventilations well, because it has lower pressure so let's say low P lower pressure let's say this one is operating at medium pressure and if you want a high pressure then uh, you would go for a compressor device now for a blower usually you would you would see this in the in the design of flatbed dryers okay so we have this centrifugal pipe blowers and of course there are many other types and then this one compressor which is typical in a uh, mechanical shop so it has higher pressures okay so just a a couple of notes regarding these air moving devices now they are weighted in terms of the static pressure the delta p and the flow rate sometimes you would you would also see the velocity but this one, this is what we need when we when we select these air moving devices. So later on in the design calculations, we have to determine the pressure drops in these systems and then the required flow rate. Okay, so this one, they they have this actually, they have the uh, let's say the capacity in terms of capacity. Uh, delta p of the fan and then the flow rate of the fans and you could think of it as 
we have to compare this to the delta p of the system right, the q of the system okay so if you buy this fans or blowers or compressors then they have this rated delta p already so it's like the capacity or the uh, resistance side and then this one would be the load sides now in terms of units for the delta p we have psi or pascals or bars or also in terms of mmh2o or inch h2o okay so this one is derived from the measurement using a a We'll just write it here using a pitot tube manometer. Okay, so the next one would be this feeders of oh, feeding and mixing devices. Okay, so example of this would be uh, something like a hopper, except that you have to provide some uh, some locking mechanisms right here. Because let's say you have a um, a positive pressure systems, and of course you are forcing the air into the systems, and any leaks or least resistance, the air will try to escape at this point. Okay, so there has to be some uh, some some locking device right here and that can be by venturi or rotary valve uh, what else screw or blow tongue and many others i guess so that's it now the third one the third assembly would be this um, conveying devices So that includes that includes the pipes, fittings, valves. Okay, so let's say we have elbows or diverter valves. If you have um, multiple inlets or multiple outlets, and this one is the. separator devices or receiving devices okay so you have to separate the the solid particles from the gas stream and that can be done by many types we, we have momentum separators we also have uh, cyclone separators uh, scrubbers, uh, electrostatic precipitators, and filters. Okay, so the difference between this these separator devices basically lies in the principle of um, of separations. Okay, so for a momentum separator, basically we have this uh, high velocity. Um, Let's say we have this high velocity gas gas uh, gas and solid mixture stream and of course since since this mixture enters a um, a space with increased volume then the the velocity of the solid particle would decrease and if the velocity decreases then um, what's going to happen then of course the um, solid particles would start to to settle down okay so it will settle down but the gas will of course leave leave out um, 
uh, I mean we'll 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 leave to the inlet so if you have filters right here then that's also possible for the cycle separators basically the the main idea is that let's say this is our gas stream with solid particles and we try to look at this top view okay so the stream enters right here in a tangential manner and because um, solid particles have he heavier masses as compared to the gas then it means that we have higher centripetal forces right here and the solid particles would 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 tend to go towards these walls and then eventually uh, I mean and then eventually it will fall down and we have this also a section right here where in the gas will also um, move in a cyclone or in a vote uh, in a vortex motion but then it will exit here the gas and then this one would be the solids and of course it's not that um i mean of course there there's also a matter of efficiency and then some lighter particles probably some we can write it here plus smaller particles can also go along with this uh, gas stream okay and this one we have the scrubbers where in you spray wa uh, spray waters in the gas stream and this one the electrostatic precipitators uh, that's also another another way and we have these filters so the filters if you want to separate a finer um, finer particle size then uh, that would be that would be another options Okay, so enough with this parts and assemblies, and now we'll go to the material properties or material characteristics or data. Okay, so the first one would be we have to know the saltation velocity and And we need to have a data for the saltation velocity so that we can um, we can determine if if it's in the I mean if we can design the system in the loot phase or or dense phase. Now, if we don't have data for saltation velocity, there is a um, a, a correlations called the risk correlation for solving the saltation velocity. Um, as a function of the particle size and the equation is like this one over ten raised to d I think this is This is X, and then we have this fraud number at saltation velocity raised to um, okay. So th this is the the equations. This one is the solid loadings. Solid loadings is basically the ratio of the mass flow rate of the solids, a okay, mass flow rate of the solids, and that's in let's say a kilogram per second over the mass flow rate of the gas. Mass flow rate of the gas, and that's in a kilograms per per second okay and then this one is um, the 1 over 10 to the x 
times the fraud number raised to beta and this x is x and b they are actually um, constants and x is equal to 140 dp that's the particle diameter and plus 1.96 and the beta is 1100 the particle diameter plus 2.5 now if you're using this uh, 1440 then you have to take note that this particle diameter that should be in uh, meters okay and this fault number if you encounter this in fluid mechanics uh, I guess that's in open channel flow if I remember it correctly, that's uh, you'll encounter this in open channel flows. The fraud number FRS is equal to the uh, saltation velocity divided by the square root of the g acceleration due to gravity times the pipe diameter. Okay, so basically, what it means that you can actually determine uh, you can you can rearrange these equations and you can find out for the saltation velocity if you are given um, if you have the area already if you have the area or the pipe diameter d so we will use these equations when we don't have the data for the um, for the saltation velocity and also uh, it is also important to realize that there are still other um, uh, correlations for the saltation velocities but this one probably the most common okay um, what else now we'll talk about this pickup velocity uh, pickup velocity is defined as the velocity velocity at which the the solid particles starts to suspend basically it's just the opposite of this saltation velocity because this one is the velocity at which the solids starts to settle down So, meaning that this peak of velocity is higher compared to this saltation velocity. And again, if we can find data for this, then uh, it has to be determined from an experiment. Okay, and also it is to be noted that the velocity at pressure system at a positive pressure system is approximately equal to 1.8 times the velocity at a vacuum system okay so meaning that the vacuum system says uh, requires um, higher velocity as compared to to the pressure systems Okay, and we have also references for this um, for this velocity for the dilute phase and dense phase. It says that in our lecture handouts, if we have a very fine powder, we have an, a velocity of 10 to 12 meters per second. And if we have a granular material, we have around 13 to 16. And for larger particles, we have greater than 16 meters per second.
that this one that's uh, less than less than or equal to three meters per second. So that depends upon the um, references, but at least you would you would have a glimpse of the uh, or let's say a feel a feeling of the ranges of this velocity depending upon the particle size so if you have a larger particle then it means that you have uh, you would need a larger uh, larger velocity so that it can it can suspend this larger particle okay so that's just the basic principle behind that okay so i guess my time my time is up now and we will continue our next discussion in the next video